Um, good afternoon. I'm Deirdre, and I'd like to thank the Mark Way of his presentation of conservation works around the state. So, Grand Arcades, um, which is included in the Victorian American campus, is located on the Chapel Street and just here in between, on the commercial street in between um, High Street, which is set, and Melbourne Road, just to the north, just on the it's designed by local architect George McMullen and instructed by his older brother James. Usually for the time, it was commissioned by women, Mrs. Delaney. It was an ambitious commercial venture, which was initially to include a skating room. This, however, was quickly badly managed out of the project and instead a residential development and was built on a private street to the right there, which is now known as the Hunting Chapel Street. And that was accessed through the arcade of Chapel Street. The arcade opened in 1819 and buys 29 shops with everything from a tailor, watchmaker, fruit shop, oyster saloon, dressmaker, and Turkish baths. Unfortunately, the banks foreclosed on Elizabeth Delaney's ownership in 1897, and the subsequent pledge of the development and changes in ownership since then reflect the cycle of human bust in Melbourne over the following years. The residences in Little Chapel Street were sold off in the 1920s and have since been demolished for this very through the um, the arcade anymore. The arcade itself has continued to accommodate a variety of tenants, including artists, clothing manufacturers, and wine stores. It was occupied completely by Dan Murphy's from the 1960s to the turn of the century, and currently it is home to event managers Atlantic Group and to retailers Dan Murphy and JB Hyde by Street Bank. We have uncovered these layers of occupants through historic research and site investigation. We can see the evolution from relatively restrained painted signage through to awning mounted signage consistent with continued commercial use of the building. Some paint, painted signage survived, and this has been retained and protected at street level. The molded rendered letters to the Pedro announcing a Quran or Cave were likely removed in the early, early 20th century supplanted by the word spent away um, in the terrazzo flooring at the Chapel Street entrance when the arcade was remapped. The steel framed warning was added in the 1950s. I can only imagine that Victorian sensibilities might have been as affronted by the sight of the gigantic banner advertising Turkish hot and bags as our modern ones are by yellow prospects. RBA's involvement with Quran Arcade began in 2015, working with the current owners as heritage associates in relation to their works for the various tenancy spaces. With tenants secured in an income stream in place, the owners were able to turn their attention to addressing the dilapidation of the sand floor. RBA the architectural conservation team carried out a condition survey of the staff in late 2018, and works by a day of restoration began in 2021. The facade was in very poor condition, with multiple layers of coatings flaking and peeling off. Lichen, moss, and various weeds were thriving on this ledges, along with an accumulation of pigeon wormholes and other creatures. Severe structural problems included the detachment of the Chapel Street facade from the middle bottom of the building. There was also substantial cracking, falling, detachment, flash, and mold rendered in this mode. It is apparent that metal sections embedded behind the render with railing expanding and causing damage to the grinding brickwork and render. Press cement decorative elements, including spandrel panels, pilasters, capitals, and sculptural elements such as the acritaria, were damaged and missing. And one of the results was missing. <laughs> Following an initial clean of the building, physical samples of render and paint finishes were taken for analysis. Stone initiatives analyzed the render and provided guidance on an appropriate sand, lime, and sand, cement, sand, and lime mix for the render repairs, paying particular attention to the expansive weathering render to the rake and encouraged pediments. Paint sample analysis has been carried out by Landmark Heritage to create a record of the finish of the plant to the building so far. And potentially inform any proposed color scheme if the building were to be repainted. Using a combination of chemical peel, 
and low pressure below water washing. The multiple layers of coatings were carefully stripped back to their render, enabling us to physically examine the fabric of the entire facade from scaffold and determine the necessary repairs. The repairs were soaked in accordance with the Australia Icamus Fur Charge Prince order to the most necessary to change the liquid process. Where embedded metal in the masonry was exposed in the rectification of the damaged render, um, the remaining, and the remaining metal was still viable. The corrosion was removed and then treated with the metal protected with a protective primer. It was only if it was too badly corroded, as it was in this case, that it was replaced with a new steel section similar in size to the replacement. Okay, the floor structure of the Lodgia Balcony comprised a system of corrugated iron vaulting between iron beams spanning east, west, and maybe filled with both beams. We saw some of this earlier in the sibling presentation. This is similar to a system known as trigger bellwet. Not exactly the same in the difference in the size of the area, but they're very this flooring system was finished with a bitumen coat of concrete and uh, sweet floors, and the soffits were aligned with um, a shellac coated timber panel. It was discovered during the works that the iron components of the second floor balcony system were severely corroded and not structurally sound. Like the like replacement, but not with modern structural standards, and the repair inadequate or the reinforcement of the existing couldn't be achieved within the building of the balcony. Instead, the balcony floor was replaced with new convex concrete slab. And we're all down there. And um, the overall depth of the structure is comparable with that of the existing and has allowed us to reinstate the timber beam to the first floor balcony and the deck to the second floor at their original levels. What did now, uh, by discovery of this latent condition, was disrupted to the work that an unanticipated extra cost. This presented an opportunity for the new concrete deck to tie the facade back to the main structure with no visible impact, rather than the pollution which was originally documented to have resulted from invisible tie rods across the uh, balconies there. Press cement decorative elements were repaired, and this component was recast from both granite and originals. For this particular trade, it was great to the apprentices learning on the job and giving us some assurance for the continuation in future such specialist trades. A traditional skin coat render finish with on solid pigments echoing the soft tones of the original color scheme was applied, and the application of color matched mineral silicon paint to press cement elements completed the conservation works. To finish, I'll uh, touch briefly again on the key signage. And basically, just thinking through there, you can see that we use photogrammetry to um, fill those. And that's the finished outcome there. I don't know if there's more. I guess there's a lot of 